and power. The hunting horn has it all. A unique weapon being one of the only two blunt weapons in the main series, and the only weapon that bumps party members with enough damage to carry your own weight and more. Hi, my name is Kara, and I'll be guiding you through an in-depth guide on the hunting horn's controls. It's basics, advanced moves, skills, and little tips and tricks you can use to speed up your buffing to get back into the action. Welcome to a late guide on the hunting horn. Let's start with the basics. In the words of my friend, the hunting horn is a directionally based weapon. I don't exactly agree with this statement, but let's go from there. This means, as you attack in certain directions, the character will react differently. For example, hitting the top face button without moving will cause a left swing from the hunting horn. But if I push the left stick forward while hitting the same button, the character does a forward hit. This applies to the right face button. And when both top and right buttons are pressed at the same time. Holding back on the left stick whilst hitting any of these buttons will cause a short hilt stab. This move does slicing damage, but has the shortest range and least damage. It's in all ways useless, but I will talk about why we use it later. Next, by pressing the left trigger after a move will spin your horn. This is an Iceborne exclusive move called an Echo Spin, and is one of the most powerful moves in the game. Finally, by pressing the right trigger, your character will swing the horn to their waist and keep them in place as they play a song. This is called a performance. This move is also directional. We'll talk more about this move in more detail later too. A final word of advice is that all these moves can be cancelled out by rolling. Now that you understand the basic moves, let's talk about the actual mechanics that make the hunting horn what it is. If you look on the top left corner of the screen, under the health and stamina bars, you will notice a set of lines like on a music sheet. Attacking with any move besides the right trigger will add a note to that line. However, Echo Spin is slightly different in that it can only follow up after an attack. These moves queue up those for a melody up to three times, which brings us to the right hand corner of the screen, where the main use of these notes will take place. As you have noticed, each horn has different melodies with different colored notes and different varying effects based on the names of the melodies. Regardless of color and effect, these notes still activate all the same. So in short, by hitting the correct notes on the melody list, you can start queuing up melodies. Very simple. If you queue up enough notes in your one short melody, the note sheet will pop up with options letting you know that specific attacks will queue up a melody. This is just to make sure you don't accidentally queue up the wrong melody or press the wrong button. Once a melody is queued up, it will drop below the note line confirming that you've just queued up a melody. Queuing up melodies can be done up to three times in total before the very bottom melody is replaced by whatever melody you queue up next. But just because it's been queued up doesn't mean you fully play the melody. That's where the right trigger comes into play. Normally, without a melody queued up, the performance is just a light slap to the monster's face. But, 
with a melody, it becomes a powerful two-hitting bat swing. This swing keeps your hunter in place, letting you play all the melodies you've just queued up. If you look to the top right corner, you can see the melodies I just played have turned green. This is a regular performance, but that's not all. By pressing the performance button again, just before finishing the melody, I can swing my horn again, playing all my melodies at once, turning them purple. This is called an encore. The purple color signifies that these melodies have been played twice, and will either last longer, or get stronger. Most melodies last up to 4 minutes, and some even 2 with the proper skill. Reapplying these melodies adds time to the duration of the melodies up to their maximum limit. Whilst during a performance, you can move while you play, but it's very slow. Slower than chugging down a potion, so be prepared to dodge out if necessary. Well, of course, you could also avoid all the risks entirely, and corner buff. Watching your teammates do all the hunting, while you shamefully heal them with melodies that do less healing than a mega potion. But you wouldn't do something so shameful, would you? Anyways, as I said before, performance is really where the directional moves come into play, since you can play your performance forward. Right? This applies to the encores as well, except for upwards. If you've noticed during the background examples just now, you'll have seen that I don't always start with the very top melody. This can be done by pressing the top face or the right face button, while pressing the right trigger at the same time. You can choose which melody you want to start off first based on the button combos shown next to the melodies listed below the music sheet. However, after the chosen first melody is played, the horn will automatically revert back to playing the very top melody before finishing off the last playable melody. This last part cannot be changed, so cue your melodies wisely. While we're on the topic of melodies, certain echo waves will apply small AoE buffs, almost like a tool booster. These don't linger that long, even with the right skill, but they allow you to buff once and walk through them again for an encore buff. Other echo waves, with names such as Impact or Dragon, are offensive echo waves, melodies that blast loud sounds to KO the monster and deal massive damage. Impact has higher KO potential, while Dragon does more damage, but both get the job done. A good use of offensive echo waves is using it as a wake-up move by stacking three of the same offensive echo waves together and hitting the monster with an encore echo wave. It stacks all the damage into one massive hit. This hit, with a good build, can stand with the likes of great swords, hammers, charge blades, and many others. Think of yourself as the world's most painful alarm clock. Now, 
Let's talk about a specific melody. Every hunting horn will always come with a melody called self-improvement. This is the easiest and fastest melody to play, and gives the player a massive speed buff, a small bit of attack, and natural mind's eye. Mind's eye is a great skill for hitting at monster parts without bouncing off, and the attack boost is a nice touch. But the best part of self-improvement is the speed buff. probably wondering just how good is the speed buff. Well, it's so good that it matches Dual Blade's demon mode without the stamina consumption, making it the second fastest unsheathed weapon. First, obviously, being Lance Charge. This buff applies only to the person who casts the melody, hence the name Self Improvement. And that's basically been how to play the Hunting Horn. You've learned the moves and the tunes, and now you can do it with the dudes. But, you can also stay and listen to the advanced moves, and my little tips to make your life a little more convenient with this weapon. Every weapon in this game has had some tech. Switch axes, reclutch after mount, the various ways to recharge files for charge blade, great sword and its roundhouse slash the slinger burst to true charge combo, and a few other non-weapons like glider mount. But I think Hunting Horn might just have the most tech out of all weapons. This part of the video will be talking about the advanced move set. Let's begin with the flourish. The right face button's forward attack. Like the hilt stab, this move doesn't do a lot of damage. But unlike the hilt stab, it doesn't have the speed to balance it out. Usually you would just ignore this move and use something else. But its purpose is not damage. Its true purpose is to play two notes in one move. It's simple. As you're doing the flourish, press any of the button notes just before the second spin and you'll have two notes queued up right away. You can kind of chain this by flourishing, then playing another note, then flourishing again. If you're not comfortable with the timing, you can also just spam the button. That's usually what I do. The Hilt Stab Shortcut. The Hilt Stab, another useless damaging attack, but also another great shortcut move. I've already explained how to Hilt Stab, and I've already explained how it works on all three buttons, and how it's the fastest move out of the entire Hunting Horn move set. See where I'm getting at? Don't want to do any long-term moves that waste time? Simply Hilt Stab. This is a great method of chaining Echo Wave melodies without the long slams and swings. These two tech methods can be chained together, making buffing at the start or in the middle of a battle pretty much instant. into performance is how you do an upwards performance. It's a great way for reaching up those high weak spots. And while we're also on the topic of performance, depending on if you're playing three notes or more for performance, all encores will have an extra attack animation. I know I should have mentioned this earlier, but here you go. I'm sorry. about the animations, uh, here they are. This is more or less an excuse to show off some of the horns, so have a listen. Here's the forward one. Advanced forward. Advanced. 
danced backwards. right Finally, advance neutral. While it's doing a super slam or a forward hit, you can do a forward performance before seeing the kick instead of the usual animation. This skips the entire forward slam animation of the performance using the momentum of your forward slam as a substitute. This is called the kick up. Imagine how you can barely move during a performance. Well, you can still move, but it's slow. That's why, like pretty much the rest of the Hot Take Horns moveset, you can animation cancel the performance just to move a tiny bit faster. By rhythmically tapping the right stick to the animation of your hunter's step, you can move your hunter forward just a tiny bit more, but at a much faster pace. Who knows? It might just save you. Finally, a little more harder to master, but also pretty fun to use, the neutral attack for the hunting horn's top face and right face button combo is the back slam. This pushes you backwards and does huge damage. Usually you'd just be pushed backwards, but by flicking the stick to face the opposite of where you'd hit the back slam, you're basically falling forwards towards the monster instead. It's a nice way to deal damage and reposition a little, and like the upper's performance, it's got some very high reach. It's also very stylish, and all in all, a very good move. Now that I've covered the hunting horn's moves and its uses, let's start talking about the technical side of the hunting horn, starting with the skills. So when it comes to skills, there really is only one mandatory skill, Horn Maestro, otherwise known as Sonorous. It increases the time limit of how long your melodies last from 2 minutes up to a maximum of 4 minutes, about as long as one hunt in a zone lasts before the monster moves. The skill can be found as level 1 and level 4 decorations, but it does not have level 4 split versions. It's pretty much a mandatory to have Sonorous too. You can also craft it as a charm if need be. The other skills that you can use are Maximum Might, giving you more affinity with a full bar of stamina, considering you don't use stamina outside of running and dodging with this weapon, and Slugger, being that it's a blunt weapon and all impact slash blunt weapons have bonuses on Slugger. However, these two skills are not mandatory, and you can choose not to slot them into your build. Hunting horns are unique in that each horn will have a different set of melodies attached to them, so from a recommendation, the best horn is usually whatever melody you find most convenient for the monster you want to hunt.
When it comes to thinking of the monster you need to hunt, you can also think about their elemental weaknesses, since Hunting Horn does have some strong elemental damage if you do enough Echo Spins, but you mainly want to prioritize the melodies first before the element. You'd also want to find Hunting Horns that have either Impact Echo Wave Melody or the Dragon Variant, since those will be your main damage healing songs, which is why for the best meta high damage in Hunting Horns, Acidic Lavnus is a good Hunting Horn, being the first out of three Hunting Horns to have the most damaging melody set in the game. The other two are Safi Jiva and Fatalis, with Safi having custom upgrades to upgrade your attack, and Fatalis with its ridiculous pure raw damage. But all three of them have the same melody, hence them being so good with damage. That, and it's the only melody set to have attack up extra large, totaling up to a 40% damage buff. This melody set is so strong, it is the only melody set to have the song Extended Melodies, meaning it does exactly what it says it does, extends the time limit of all your melodies in one fell swoop. Or I guess refill the time limit to be specific? It is very overpowered, and I wish more hunting horns had this melody too. It would make other hunting horns more useful or to rebuff faster. Seriously, if Capcom makes a new main series release with world's hunting horn mechanics, please add this one melody to the hunting horns. It's just so good. I, I know Rise has its thing, but in case they go back to the slower version, God, please. Right, going back on topic, your playstyle, your choice. Before I go over the tips, let's get the good and bad out of the way. Seeing as Hunting Horn is my main, I'll try to be as unbiased as possible. For a melee weapon, the Hunting Horn has phenomenally high reach, able to knock down monsters like Sharj, Vala, and Volcana, even with how high their heads are. The weapon is fast, meaning you can knock down monsters and do enough elemental damage to break Alatrion's Eschaton Judgment. For example, And that was all just in one hunt. Anyways, back to the list. The Hunting Horn is the only weapon that buffs party members with skill-related melodies, meaning you could potentially go in with more slotted skills than what's just on your armor and weapons. The weapon requires only one mandatory skill to be effective, making your build a little more free to pick and choose other skills. All moves are easy to cancel out of, and Finally, like I said before, the weapon has high movement speed and natural mind's eye, so there's no need to worry about your weapon bouncing off as well as allowing you to strafe around most attacks. Now, let's move on to the disadvantages. Even though the hunting horn is a blunt weapon, it's not exactly a monster. It is possible, but it's just not as potent as the hammer. Outside of one type of melody set, every other melody set does not come with extended melodies, requiring you to add more time to your buffs individually rather than all at once. Monster Hunter World's Hunting Horde is not really built to fight monsters on the fly. Arena fights like Special Assignment Latrion are especially difficult because of this, since you gotta start buffing yourself quick while dodging the monster's attacks. This also goes for monsters that don't flee, like gold or silver, making it really hard to buff with everything going around you, and wasting songs you just queued up to dodge instead. This is a semi-disadvantage, but anyone with control drift will have trouble playing this weapon, since some moves require you to stay still, and sometimes it's more optimal to play in place rather than moving. The Hunting Horn is the only weapon that has a disadvantage when it comes to achieving. You either gotta achieve with the right trigger or the top face button, but sometimes neither move is what you want, so you gotta stop, pull out the hunting horn, then attack. This takes away precious moments you could be using to hit the monster. Now that I've covered everything about this weapon, here are some small tips I've learned along the course of my time playing with the hunting horn. As I've said before, a fight in a zone lasts for about 4 minutes, most of the time. So it's always good to reapply your buffs just before entering the next fight zone. 
You don't want to go into the next fight Leroy Jenkins style, forgetting to reapply your self-improvement before realizing it's too late. Regardless of if you just applied them a minute ago or not, it's always a good idea to rebuff again. Healing melodies are practically useless. In the time you've spent casting your healing or your antidote melodies, your party would have fully healed by then, even with the fastest tech I've provided. Not to mention it's laughable how much you heal. It heals less than a potion with the medium ones, and even the large variants barely count as megas. And if you're wondering, no, there are no such things as extra large heal melodies. That's why I personally recommend you prioritize on hunting horns that buff you and your party with support skills rather than healing ones. Stuff like attack up, ailment negation, earplugs, and in the very rare occasion, wind negation. That sort of stuff. Those that I listed are the ones that provide more for the party, and you aren't sat in the corner healing everyone with your hunting horn constantly. The only healing melody I use is an HP up and affinity up melody, because of the affinity attached to the melody. And sadly, it's the only affinity melody. Now, this was more of a personal bias. There are healing horn builds out there that do a great job at healing, but I never really enjoyed them. Also, they also have the same problem of just healing in the corner. Either way, this tip was more of a bias tip, and you can take healing horns into battle if that's what you rather prefer. But just know that I've warned you. So say you're fighting a double joke. You hit him enough for him to do his retaliate charge attack. A good way to counter this is just performance as head. You don't need melody queued up or anything, you can just whack him off balance. This might take some practice and with the timing and spacing, but once you get it, it's really fun. Flourish is one of those moves you think you'd be stuck in animation until the move ends, right? Well, as it turns out, you can cancel out Flourish by rolling just before the second spin. It's a very simple thing you think wouldn't work, but well, there it is. I haven't done a full test on it, I just learned it recently, but it might just be faster than the neutral right face button attack. This doesn't mean you can use your usual flourish tech and also roll out of it though. It's either one or the other. You can't have both. Finally, this one is weird, but for whatever reason, the hunting horn, as far as I'm aware, is the only weapon that does a unique mount finisher, depending on if you're on your head or anywhere else. When finishing on the head, it's four swings, on the back or tail, it's always three. So TLDR, always finish on the head. Giggity. So before I end it off, here are some important mechanics I probably should have mentioned a while ago. The hunting horn is a heavy weapon, meaning if you clutch onto a monster, you will soften its hide rather, ha rather than have it drop uh, monster pods. Both blunt weapons are heavy. This is why we need more blunts. Capcom, Tonfus, when, please. The forward hit on the top and right face button combo will always penetrate parts of the monster to hit the head if you're aiming for it. This makes it easier to hit heads while also standing under or to the side of the monster. The hunting horn is massive range as I said before, so you don't always have to be on the monster's face. You can stand to the sides or a bit in front of them and still hit, so gauge out the distance of your swings. And as a final word of advice, learn your melodies. By knowing what note comes next in a melody, you can chain melody queuing being able to almost instantly have your buffs lined up and ready at the press of a button. So that has been my hunting horn tutorial. I hope it's been helpful. I hope uh, my editing isn't too bad. I'm actually recording all this 
before I edit. <laughs> so, if there are any questions that you need answering, you can ask them in the comments. I'll do my best to respond to them. Uh, yeah. Uh, Direwolf staff, I hope this fucking helped you guys. Vol specifically. I know you need desperate help with the hunting horn. Uh, anyone else that wasn't there isn't in my friend group and watching this, uh, like and subscribe, I guess. I'll try and make more videos like this. I don't know how good it'll be. But yeah. I hope you enjoyed my performance. I'll see you next time.